to DC Today. Today is Wednesday, uh, February the 8th, and Brian Seitel here with you. Um, can kind of go over some of the uh, market commentary for the day and go through some of, uh, some of what we saw and what we were thinking about. So last night, futures opened up slightly negative, um, maybe 40 points or so, lost a little bit of steam. Europe was up most of the night, or actually all the night. They kind of held held gains, but we traded lower in futures and were down something like 100 points or so into the open. Um, opened down maybe 110, made it back to fair even, uh, even value, fair value within a few hours, or not even that, about an hour, and then just sort of slowly drifted lower throughout the day. And most of the reason was due to all different Fed governors and Fed presidents talking, uh, I think four or five of them, uh, more hawkish comments. So following sort of yesterday's update with with Jerome Powell's comments, um, which markets somehow applauded. I didn't really um, believe it. Breadth was low yesterday, and so I was a little surprised to see it close as high as it did yesterday, because he basically just said the same thing. He didn't really add anything new, which is just that rate hikes are going to slow, but that they're going to stay higher, and you know it's data dependent, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but on the day, uh, top news story, you know, you know, President Biden gave his State of the Union address last night. I'm sure most of you saw that. I, I watched um, the whole thing. Um, I, I don't know how to say it. I mean, his approval rating went up one point um, after the speech. So I guess that gives you whether it was a good or bad. It, it moved by one point higher, which is to 41 and more or less the low of his term. Um, there was talk about the debt ceiling. He um, uh, touted some of the job gains over the last couple of years, although did mention that that was coming off of a of a global pandemic and, and not a partisan comment, but just just factual, just typical politics. Um, uh, he did use the term "finishing the job" four or five times, and whether you read into that and say that's because he is running for a second term or not, I, I really didn't think that, that he would, but after last night, maybe the odds are a little bit higher that he may. Um, that was probably the top news story on the day from last night. The news in the day, intraday, was more, again, Fed governors coming out and talking about where they see interest rates and, and giving their commentary on, on markets and things. Um, and to give you an idea, let's see, Powell last night, um, or yesterday, talked about disinflation, meaning peak inflation had, a, had, a, had occurred. and and the rate of inflation was, was going down definitively. Today, however, um, uh, Fed Governor Waller talked about excessive inflation being more of a serious problem than higher rates, and he doesn't see immediate drop of inflation, so rates are going to be higher for longer. Um, Fed, uh, New York Fed uh, Williams uh, said that there's a lot more to do today, that financial, uh, financial conditions are tighter, and sees a terminal rate of five and a five and a quarter, which is um, about about what the market is, is thinking it as well. Kashkari today out of Minnesota said that uh, wage, uh, wage growth is far too hot for us to see a 2% inflation rate. So basically a hawkish comment that uh, rates are gonna stay long, uh, higher for longer. And then Fed Governor Cook said the same thing, rates are gonna be higher for longer. So um, I don't know why they wouldn't say those things personally. You know, They have a Fed funds rate at 475 at this point. They're trying to cool inflation. They're getting what they want. Inflation is going down. Um, why would they change their, you know, their guidance at this point? I don't think they would or should um, until they feel like they've claimed victory. So markets sold off a little bit because of this stuff. Rates were a tiny bit higher. The 10-year was up about four and a half basis points. Um, tech stocks were hit pr pretty much uh, across the board today. Looking into you know, some of the things that we would look at for, as far as a recession, recession goes, and there was a dividend cafe about this a um, few weeks ago, and not to repeat it, but... Um, you know, with jobs number last month at 517,000 in non-farm payroll and 3.4% unemployment, it's pretty hard to argue that we're in a recession. Um, time will tell and history will be history. But some of the things that we're looking at and keeping an eye on that are usual indicators, uh, which are all flashing red or orange, you know, yellow, I guess, <laughs> meaning that they're on our, they're on our screen. Um, the yield curve remains highly inverted. It's inverted something like 80 basis points on the twos, tens, and 108 basis points on a three-month tenure. Um, and historically, I put a chart uh, that you'll see here, but you know, it, it's, it's a decent indicator. It doesn't cause a recession. It's usually a sign in the economy that there's been a, a policy mistake in the Fed, meaning that they're too tight. Um, 
upwards earnings surprises are the lowest right now since 2008, which was the financial crisis. Uh, again, another sign of, of, of recession. Um, consumer stress is, is, uh, uh, is elevated right now. Food prices, gas prices, mortgage rates. If you think about the consumer, it's a little stressed. Bank lending is tighter than it was a year ago. Profit margins have dropped from about 17.7 to 16.2, and typically a drop of 150 basis points, which is exactly what that is, is indicative of a recession. And then the PMI, uh, both in manufacturing and services, kind of waffling between positive and, and negative territory, contracting and expanding territory. Again, you know, some some flashing signs there. So, so yeah, you know, I don't know that it's a, an immediate thing, but th these signs are things that we pay attention to, no question about it, um, and we'll see. Some real estate uh, news, um, nothing we don't already know. I mean, the housing supply is still at a 20-year low. We're about 400,000 in an imbalance from demand and supply in housing. Um, the median price is down 11% over the last year. But from an affordability standpoint, which is what most home buyers care about, you know, what their payment is, um, with rates at 6%, you're at a 2200 dollar a month payment versus a fifteen hundred dollar a month payment and so if you think about what it would take at six percent mortgage rates for that to correct and come back down it would be another thirty percent drop in prices of course that's not going to happen um, or, or not likely to happen what will likely happen is that there'll be continued pre downward pressure on prices but that there'll also be downward pressure on interest rates and those two things might settle out um, to get us back to where we were um, The, um, the economic news on the day wasn't a huge number. It was wholesale inventories, which are basically, it's a forward-looking indicator on wholesaler, uh, wholesale inventories as far as uh, uh, building uh, a stockpile of goods uh, to sell uh, based on a demand assumption. So what it basically means is demand is assumed to be lower in the future, and, and so that's a little bit more of a, of a cooling uh, number for the economy. But other than that, it was fairly quiet. Tomorrow, um, there's uh, some jobless claims uh, that, that we'll have. I know the next big print from economic standpoint is going to be on Tuesday of next week, which is the CPI number. So markets will be paying attention to that. Um, and uh, we'll have uh, my, my partner, business partner, Trevor Cummings, will bring you DC Today tomorrow. And then David will be back on you, uh, back with you on Dividend Cafe for Friday. So that's kind of kind of round out our week. And then, of course, we head into Super Bowl Sunday uh, weekend, where the Philadelphia Eagles will be taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. And being a Chargers fan, I can't root for another AFC West team. So I'm definitely going for the Eagles, and my prediction for the game, which will be accurate, is 37 to 31. Anyways, that's what I've got for you today. I appreciate you listening. As always, reach out with questions, email me, call me anytime. And thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.